Thousand Autumns, is a Meng Shi Shi novel. This is an audiobook made by fans for other fans. Disclaimer. The main couple of the story is made up of two men, if you don't like it don't listen. Thank you. Remember. Subscribe and click the bell to stay updated on all the new releases. Enjoy. Chapter 94 Eating this spoonful was obviously not against the heavens nor causing harm, but he would under the watch of many pairs of eyes fall into this predicament, any normal person would not choose to open their mouth. Shen Qiao had sensed that since meeting Yan Wuxi at Huang Manor again his attitude towards him had undergone a remarkable shift, if you were to say the other previously harbored the cruelest intention, ushering him towards death, then now the other was more happy to see him humiliated, caught in awkward situations. But why this shift in attitude, Shen Qiao had no answer, could only say that Yan Wuxi had found another interest. Hey Qiao, I remember you like to eat fish, this fish is fresh and tender, it probably suits your palate. As if to confirm Shen Qiao's hypothesis, Yan Wuxi's face really carried an amused smile, cruel however you looked at it. The two of them glared at each other for a moment, even the others beside them could sense a hint of something unusual. Shen Qiao slowly said, Thank you Yan Zongju for your kindness, but this poor one has hands and feet, so will not waste the hard-earned promise that Yan Zongju received. Yan Wuxi raised his brow, Hey Qiao, you are someone who always keeps your word, surely you won't break a promise over such a small request. Shen Qiao had an idea, well that's because Yan Zongju was first to break his word. Yan Wuxi, when have I not spoken truthfully? Shen Qiao, Yan Zongju your memory is truly terrible, you previously said, you only require opponents and not friends, how come after this short while, this poor one has become your close friend? Yan Wuxi hid a smile, that's not called breaking my word, but time and situations change, at that moment I really felt this way, but the way a person thinks will change, otherwise Heiao when you were three and wouldn't walk when you saw Tang Gren, today if you saw Tang Gren would you still be unable to walk? Shen Qiao huffed, I just know that there are some people who really cannot walk when they see Tang Gren. He was talking about Zeeling. Yan Wuxi, face showing shock, purposefully misinterpreted this, really? there's a person that's so enduring in their devotions. Isn't that perfect for a close friendship? How could this person be so shameless, backwards forwards horizontal or vertical he'll have a reason? Shen Qiao knew he couldn't win with words, seeing how the others were all looking at the two of them, started to flush, felt how childish it all was, lowered his voice and said, we're in public, Yan Zongju please respect yourself, if you want to argue then we can talk about it when we return. Yan Wuxi smiled, I'm just offering you a spoonful of fish, how am I not respecting myself? Saying this he continued to push the spoon towards Shen Qiao, Shen Qiao retreated to avoid him, raised his hand to object, Yan Wuxi didn't appear to move but a flip of the wrist and the spoon appeared in his other hand, continued towards Shen Qiao, things appeared inevitable. The two of them had not moved, their sleeves turned, in a moment they had passed several moves, everyone else watched with their mouths open. Many of them still didn't understand what was happening, Zhao Qiaoying was contemplating whether to intervene, several Bixia sect disciples thought this was a rare opportunity to learn, and were looking closely at their movements, afraid to miss anything. Shai Wu, when things got physical, made to get up, but was held back by Yuan Song. Shikshan should look closely, Shai Zun and Yan Zongju are just having an exchange, and not really fighting, otherwise by now the place would be demolished, how could they still be seated steadily? Yuan Song said. Shai Wu was still worried, they were fine just now, why did things get physical? Yuan Song looked at their movements, unconcerned said, 
maybe it's because Yan Zongju was displeased with Shai Zun, and purposefully looked for trouble. Shai Wu had a scare, why is Yan Zongju displeased with Shai Zun? Yuan Song was mature for his age, but some things he only knew in part, so couldn't say for sure, hearing the question just shook his head, I think he felt ignored by Shai Zun just now, so was unhappy. Shai Wu seemed to realize something, carefully considered this, but felt something about it was still not quite right. Those two fighting, the back and forth was quite spectacular, people were afraid to blink, had pretty much forgotten the origin of the fight, Yan Wuxi still held the spoon in one hand, only using his wrist and arm in the exchange, with his other hand he picked up a peanut from the tabletop and flung it at Chai Wu. Shen Qiao seeing this made to block the attack, his sleeves wide, a clap a sweep, the action graceful, carrying with it the leisurely ease characteristic of the deist sex, everyone couldn't help sigh at the sight, never mind the Bixia sect disciples, even Zhao Qiaoying and Yu Kunqi had admiration written on their faces. But in this instant, Yan Wuxi had already wound his hand up to the other's waist, and pressed the spoon to the other's lips, the hand at his waist made to seal his meridians, Shen Qiao arched his body to avoid it, on the other end his defenses slipped, that spoonful of fish had entered his mouth. The whole exchange happened in a breath, not waiting for Shen Qiao's response, Yan Wuxi retreated entirely, said, Shen Dea Zhang really doesn't say what he means, if you want to eat it why make an ordeal, making me put so much effort in, you should have opened your mouth earlier. This was totally. Shen Qiao swallowed the fish with some difficulty, between quitting the banquet in rage and directly beating up the other he was undecided. The former made a gesture of apology towards their host, the latter appeared to be minimizing his antics. But this was totally, shameless, could not be endured. Do I have a face that asks to be bullied, being toyed with like some trinket in the palm of your hand? Shen Qiao's face darkened, this time he was truly angry. But he didn't erupt at the scene, because in that case will cause trouble for Zhao Qiaoying, instead he nodded slowly, Yan Zongju's technique is better, I cannot compare, thanks for the lesson. Then raised his cup to Zhao Qiaoying, thank you Zhao Zongju for taking care of Shai Wu while I was out, I don't drink wine, so will substitute with tea to pay my respects to Zhao Zongju. Zhao Qiaoying stole a glossé at Yan Wuxi, the latter was still smiling, joy or anger was not apparent, it was hard to tell. She said candidly, Shen Deoxian no need to be formal, you've done Bixia sect a huge favor, our friendship is close, this small thing you don't need to mention it, never mind one Chai Wu, even if there were ten of him, Bixia sect can still afford to feed them, if we're talking about appetites, Shai Wu eats less than Yexu. Shai Wu, embarrassed, how can you compare this, Zhou Jia is older. Everyone seeing him like this burst into laughter, the brief interlude from before was promptly forgotten. After the banquet ended, Shen Qiao bade his farewell to Zhao Qiaoying and the rest, and brought Chai Wu and Yuan Song back to their houses to rest. After settling them, Shen Qiao returned to his own house, and saw that someone was standing at his door. The moon was bright, under the eaves was a lamp, illuminating the other's features clearly. Shen Qiao was still angry, didn't want to speak even a half sentence, thought if I can't deal with you I can certainly hide from you, so without speaking, turned and walked away. But someone was faster than him, Shen Qiao had only taken one step, before his arm was held. Shen Qiao pulled his hand back, expressionless, Yan Zongju please respect yourself. Yan Wuxi smiled, still mad. Shen Qiao had no words. Yan Wuxi, I was just teasing you, without any ill will, if you're upset, I'll make it up to you. Shen Qiao said quietly, Yan Zongju's offer to make reparations, 
I honestly cannot undertake, first you said you didn't need friends, then you said this poor one was not qualified to be your friend, I accepted this, later when I went to save you, it was for the sake of your connection to Yuan Yang, only if Zhou is peaceful, can the entire north have peace, I had no ulterior motive, and never wanted your thanks or for you to return the favor, now that you have recovered, all the more reason. For the bridge to remain a bridge, the street to remain a street, Yan Zongju has his sunny streets, this poor one has his plank bridge, I have but two sleeves in the wind, no possessions, I don't know what has attracted Yan Zongju's attention, why time, and again you make things difficult. Please tell me directly, this poor one will change. He was greatly influenced by Chi Fenga, combined with his propensity towards kindness, generosity, never holding back on treating others well, even the deepest injury, like how much Yue A harmed him, after Shen Qiao's sadness and anger had passed, he wouldn't spend his days and nights grinding his teeth, plotting the other's demise. Yan Wuxi was the exception, after falling off the cliff their lives were enmeshed, give and take, who owed who it was not so easily said, but bitten by a snake one day, terrified of rope for ten years, Shen Qiao just wanted to avoid him, better not to see him at all, alas things did not go as planned, he still couldn't understand, in the world, people better and more beautiful than Shen Qiao number in the thousands, people more downtrodden more tragic also in the thousands, why won't Yan Wuxi? Let him be. All of these long-standing discontents multiplied, from his heart emerged a feeling akin to the inexpressibility of self-pity, without knowing where to begin. Shen Qiao just felt exhausted. This expression of self-pity and gloom appeared very cute to Yan Wuxi, even the current bored angle of his mouth, without him being aware of it, reflected the moon's tenderness. Except this tenderness was barely there, and Shen Qiao didn't see it. How has this venerable one made things difficult for you, if I really wanted to that, I have many crueler and harsher methods, why would I pull this kind of harmless joke? Shen Qiao, furious, how can this be called harmless, in public, you, you actually. Anger simmering in his chest, he momentarily was at a loss for words. Yan Wuxi snorted, come on, let me make it up to you, don't be mad anymore, what about if this venerable one personally went to the kitchen and made you a bowl of soup for forgiveness? Shen Qiao twisted his head, no need. Yan Wuxi pulled him along, the words I said before, even if they hurt you there's no way around it, words that have been spoken are like water out of a basin, they can never be taken back, this venerable one can't take on the childish stance of it's too late to regret, you're a great person, will you really be like the commoners, never forgetting the events that have already passed by, continuing to carry it with you. Everyone says Shendaya Zhang is generous, doesn't count past grievances, how come you treat this venerable one differently, unless this is the fate they speak of in legends? Shen Qiao rage laughed, fated for disaster. Yan Wuxi didn't seem to mind, disaster fate or lifetime fate, left or right it's still fate, in the deist sects they teach fate, how come when it comes to yourself, you don't know how to go along with it? Shen Qiao, as I see it, you shouldn't be called Yan Wuxi. Yan Wuxi, then what should I be called? Shen Qiao with a cold laugh, you should be called always has a reason, horizontal or vertical there's reason for everything. Yan Wuxi laughed. Shen Qiao was pulled into the kitchen, in the afternoon the cooks had just used the space, there were still ingredients left, and they were fresh. Yan Wuxi, give me 15 minutes. Shen Qiao knitted his brows, I'm not hungry. Yan Wuxi didn't even turn his head, I know, you were so angry you ate it for supper. Shen Qiao choked. Yan Wuxi moved fast, using his inner chi to speed up the cooking fire, 
the water boiled quickly, the fish, starch, egg was mixed evenly, molded into balls, boiled, sprinkled with scallions, salt, thus two bowls of fish ball soup were completed. Martial masters also have to eat and sleep, even if Yan Wushi had a high-ranking position, when he traveled he couldn't always bring along a slew of servants, there will be times he has to cook for himself, when the two of them were on the road fleeing, Shen Qiao already saw his culinary skills, so at this moment wasn't too surprised. Shen Qiao scooped a spoonful into his mouth, found it tasted pretty good, although his anger hadn't dissipated, but couldn't say it tasted bad out of spite, and so started to eat without making a sound. Then, the other offered him his spoon. Shen Qiao, what's this for? Yan Wushi, I thought I was making amends. Shen Qiao, confused, then why are you giving me your spoon? Yan Wushi smiled, before I fed you, you weren't happy, now you can feed me, we each get a turn, and then we'll be even. Right now he really wanted to upturn his bowl of fish ball soup onto the other's head. Life at Bixia sect was even keeled but flew by quickly. With Zhao Chiaying as witness, Shen Qiao let Yuan Song formally perform the rites to become his disciple, while he was teaching his disciples, he didn't let his own Wujong training fall to the wayside, day after day, his inner qi gradually crept towards his previous level, even had the semblance of surpassing it. Although Zhao Qiaying was worried about the continuation of Bixia sect, she also recognized that the most important task before her was teaching the disciples well, in case not only do they not find a piece of jade but also lay waste to the existing tree shoots. With Yan Wushi and Shen Qiao these two top-tier masters present, her expectations towards her disciples were higher, her standards were more strict, everyone complained to no avail, could only appeal to Yu Kunqi, good person Yu Kunqi was caught between his shimei and the disciples, appeared more troubled every day, mired in chaos. Yan Wushi appeared to put down roots in Bixia sect, didn't make any mention of leaving, Bixia sect couldn't chew him away, moreover from time to time Yan Wushi could advise them on their Wujong, although this advice was accompanied by ridicule sharper than knives, everyone in Bixia sect could only accept this pain and joy. Within the mountain no day no night, but outside lots of things were happening. After Yuan Yun took power, he recommended Switing Chanchi as Kuashi, poured his support into Buddhism, and in his mother's name, built Buddhist temples broadly, the influence of the Buddhist sects that under Yuan Yang's rule had been greatly suppressed, was emerging out of the shadows. On the other hand, Yuan Yun greatly used He Huan sect, mimicking the previous emperor's relationship to Huan Yu sect, allowed their influence to enter court, surveillancing the court officials, and let He Huan sect and the Buddhist sects each reign in their footholds in Jianghu, but everything at his disposal. Under these circumstances, the Buddhist sects and He Huan sect used the opportunity to expand, from Chang'an spreading to the north, many small medium sects under their coercion and force, either aligned with the Buddhist sects, or merged into He Huan sect. Lingyan Temple, Duyuanzai, etc., originally big names among the Buddhist sects in Jianghu, soundlessly were taken over by court, to be governed exclusively by the Kuashi. In the case of the Wao, Pingshantang these small sects, collapsed on account of the deaths of their leaders, in the end were forced into Hehuan sect. Almost in one night, the Buddhist sects and Hehuan sect, like crushing dry weeds, quickly expanded their influence, and became colossal beasts. Yan Wushi's previous predictions, after half a year, came true. End of the chapter. Stay tuned for more BL.